Congressman Dutch Ruppersberger, uh, ranking member of the House Intel Committee, joins me now. Congressman, welcome. Good morning. Thank you, Martha. Good. So, uh, so you heard uh, Michael Hayden there, the former head of the, of the CIA, saying that he thinks that actually they'll have access to more of people's information this way. Is that so? Well, not people's information. Uh, let's talk about what the si situation is. Uh, pr we need to deal with the issue of privacy. Uh, Mike Rogers and I have been listening to our constituents, and there was a concern uh, that the metadata that was being held by our intelligence community uh, was really content information. That was not the case. But notwithstanding that, uh, we came together with a plan, and we've been negotiating with the White House, uh, to not have the government hold metadata anymore, and yet, uh, that when we need the information to protect our country from terrorist attacks, uh, our, the FBI would go to the phone companies who hold all of the data for phone calls and, and right. numbers and things of that nature. And, and not only are we changing the system, but we also are requiring that the court review uh, the what they call the reasonable articulable sus suspicion uh, that someone, that the intelligence community would get being concerned about a terrorist attack. And let me give you an example. You have someone from Yemen, a ter known terrorist, calling the United States. We want to know who he's calling and if there's a conspiracy going on. And as a result of that, uh, we would get that intelligence and then find out and make a determination yeah. and investigate whether you know, there's a terrorist attack. I understand. So, so a judge yeah. would need to okay the use of that. I call it information. It's, it's the phone numbers, just the phone numbers sure. that go back and forth from a foreign entity exactly. uh, to the United States. Uh, you know, we spent $1.5 billion on this data center in Utah to collect this data. I'm curious, what, what, what's going to happen to that facility if we don't need to hold all of this data, A, and B, the phone companies initially said they didn't want to be responsible for this stuff. Well, how did you, how did you change that situation? Well, let me get to the phone companies first. I, we've been negotiating with the phone companies, the intelligence community, and the White House. Again, this is a bipartisan bill. Uh, the phone companies like this plan because, number one, they get a, a document, an administrative subpoena, asking for a certain number of a possible right. pairs. That's the first thing. The second thing, we're not requiring them in our bill to hold this data, these numbers, uh, for any period of time. They like that. They have to maintain and keep these numbers for 18 months pursuant to FCC regulations. So the phone companies are cooperating and working with us on this issue. And this is individual case by case now instead of having a whole data. You know, the men and women who work at CIA are, are, are fantastic people. They're smart. They're dedicated. And they get up in the morning knowing that they're helping to, to really protect our country from terrorist attacks. And a lot of this negativity and a lot of this false information about how they're listening to you is just not right. true. Right. No, I, I understand that. You know, I, I, don't, I don't have that much time, but I want to ask you just one other question because I think this is yeah. really important. You know, there, there's all of this data out there. Now the phone companies are basically doing, it sounds pretty much like what they used to do. They keep it for about 18 months. If it gets yeah. subpoenaed, then they'll have to turn it over. But my question right. is, how effectively are we using this data? You know, we're almost at the one-year anniversary of the Boston Marathon bombing. Even though Tamerlan Zernayev was on four terrorist watch lists, nobody monitored or pulled any of his metadata uh, or calls to Dagestan. So are we using all of this stuff efficiently? That, uh, I think, is course, another big side uh, of this story. Of, cor of course we are. But let me tell you what we did. You, you talk about the Boston Marathon. We used the, the program, the, the bulk collection metadata program, to find out whether or not the two brothers uh, were involved in conspiracies, was it, was it an international incident, or was it just the two of them acting alone? And, and uh, as a result of this program, we were able to focus on them and realize that we didn't have to worry there would be another 9-11. Well, that was after the fact, though, okay. not before yeah, the bombing. Yeah, but, but it's intelligence is gaining information uh, to take you to the next level to find out really what the facts are and whether or not we need to go after people who are trying to attack us. Right, That's we, the purpose of the program. We wish you well. It's really important okay, sure. uh, to get this right. And, and Congressman sure, no Ruffelsberger, thank you very much for being with us today. Okay. Got it. Sure. 21 passed. Stunning scene here.